So, what is faith? Because they're talking about engaging the power of faith, fulfillment of prophecies. What is faith? Faith is not a religious theory. Faith is a mystery of the kingdom. First Timothy 3 9. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Faith is not a religious theory. Faith is not a religious principle. Faith is a mystery of the kingdom. What is it that makes faith a mystery? Faith operates beyond the natural sphere to deliver its result. That's what makes the mystery. All principles and theories operate within the natural sphere of humanity. But faith operates outside the natural realm into the supernatural realm to deliver its result. Now, watch. Everybody was strong in Jesus and it was in the midst of a crowd. And a woman came behind and touched the hem of his garment. He said, hey, somebody touched me. They said, how? That has gone out of me. Peter said, no, 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 no. We are all strong in you. He said, stop that. Somebody has engaged the mystery of faith. To tap him beyond the skies. And the woman came trembling and said the reason for which he touched him. And he said, Thy faith has drawn him from the grave beyond and has made you whole. That's what makes the mystery. Faith is a mystery because it draws virtue from the grave beyond to deliver result. It draws virtue from the grave beyond to deliver its result. Say with me, faith is a mystery. Now the Bible says, who has believed our report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Now, Isaiah 53 verse 1. So, what faith does is to invoke the hand of God into your situation. It invokes what? The hand of God. It invokes the hand. That's the difference between faith and a belief system. It's about tapping into powers from the great beyond. Come and say, I'll receive that. Say convincingly. What is faith? Faith is not a belief system. Faith is a spiritual weapon. Come and say, spiritual weapon. Say it loud, spiritual weapon. Daniel, a man of great faith and great understanding. Great understanding will always result into great faith. Dear the den of the lion. Was cast into the den of the lions. And was there overnight. And there was no scratch on his flesh. Because he believed in his God. Can I hear your amen? Because faith is not a belief system. Faith is a spiritual weapon with unlimited capacity to silence the noises of the enemy. Can I hear your amen? amen. Ephesians 6 and verse 16, he said, above all, holding the sheet of faith, and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. You saw those four Hebrew boys, they were cast into the fiery furnace. The people who threw them there to show that it was no fake fire. They were choked from outside to death. And the fellows inside were walking. And there was no smell of fire on their body. Their clothes were not burned. Their hearts were preserved. And their hair didn't, was not stenched. Their body has been translated Hallelujah. from the terrestrial to the celestial. Their bodies have been yielded. They have become partakers of divine nature. Chapter 3 of Daniel, verse 28. The fiery furnace was quenched by faith because they trusted. He delivered the servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word by yielding their bodies to be stronger than fire. Glory to God. By yielding their bodies to be stronger than fire. 
Come and say, I'll receive it. That is the supremacy of faith over every kind of belief system in the world. Now, you can be a professor emeritus of psychology and animal related psychology. How to program animals to behave. Can that take you through the den of lions? You can develop your own research in psychology in the area of fire. How to nullify effect of fire. Can you try that in the fiery furnace? Before you unleash your first philosophy, your throat has been cut to two. It's far beyond any belief system in the world. Including all metaphysical jargons. Can't stand it. That's the audacity of faith in dealing with the issues of life. Now, 1979, from the book of um, Oswald J. Smith, no, 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 uh, Smith Wiggles what? My faith caught fire. And Ephesians 2, 6, and 2, 1, 20, and 21 came alive. And I saw me positioned far above all oh, principles and powers that people are scared of. Wow! I finished preaching in that place and I said, are there witches here? Stand up. Oh, man. I was, I was high. High. Terribly, dangerously high. All oh, witches here, stand up. And then, blah, 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 blah. Everybody stood up. That, he has seen us. He has seen us. Just stood up. Tiny, tiny girls. I rejoice. After seeing those witches, I rejoice. You know, witches will scare you naturally, but I rejoice. And I said, you come, come, come on here. Tell me what to do with the devil. He said, when we want to suck blood, we get on the highway. I said, what when people like us are coming? He said, when we sense a higher power, we clear out the highway. It's not everybody that witch can consume. Amen. Till I die. Any witch that stands on the road when I'm coming is dead. I'm dead. Any witch that looks at my eye and mistakenly catches my eyeball is gone. Can I tell you this? <laughs> now, I'm not playing, though. If you're a witch, be very careful. <laughs> you better be careful, I tell you something. Amen. You know, I got to the family and I called the family limited. You know, there are some truths can be very intoxicating. And everybody gathered together. I said, I've been told all the wicked things that you do in this place. If I hear Pekka from today, today, <laughs> It may not so know if I hear Pekka from Everybody she. Come as your authority. Man, I, know, I, I was taller than this then, you know. And Lankia, you know what I mean? <laughs> Glory to God. Come and say with me, I'm blessed. My story is changing. My destiny is taking shape. Hallelujah. So faith is no belief system. It's a mighty spiritual weapon. Now, it's very important for us to also appreciate the fact that Bible faith is domiciled in the heart. Is what? For it is with the heart that we believe. Where do we believe? Okay. It is domiciled in the heart and not in the head. This is where many intellectuals miss it. Bible faith is domiciled in the heart and not in the head. Man is a three-in-one creature. He is essentially a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. So, so, but his spirit, man, is the domain of his dominion. So, faith is of the heart, not of the head. And this is one, how it plays out. Every time faith is rooted in the heart, it dominates the mind. It dominates the soul. Because it is your spirit that rules your mind. Can I hear your amen? amen. Okay. 
Okay, for instance, he had a doctor has put up a stain on my hand and he said, Hey, your blood pressure is high. I said, Not mine. Now, you see, your mind has been subdued by the faith of your heart. The faith in your heart has subdued your mind. Glory to God. He said, Look at this. Not necessary. Not necessary. Why? Long before then, God has planted that in my heart that himself took my infirmity and bore my sicknesses. Took. And understand that bit of past tense. Now, surely he has borne my griefs. And Greek translation said that means sicknesses. And bore my sorrows and that means pains. So, I am redeemed to be sickness and pain free. Yes. Come on, let me hear your amen. Yes. So, for you to say you have seen what he took, I have to choose who is a liar between you and the one who took it. And the name of the one who took it is called the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, you, I don't know who you are, but this one I know who he is, is the truth. Now, and I wasn't saying that beggarly. I wasn't saying that to appeal to him. No, I'm saying, not me. What you read now is not me. That's not this body. Maybe your body because we are, the two of us are touching the equipment. <laughs> now that was the end of it. I never know the name of any high blood pressure drug. And he had no moral strength to prescribe one. Because of the violence of reaction. I say it's not me. You say, what are you prescribing for? You prescribe for yourself. <laughs> It ended there. My wife had pure miscarriage. The, host, the doctor in the hospital was my cousin. And the two of them had confirmed it was miscarriage. <laughs> and my wife said to me, I have miscarriage. I said, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? Now you see, that's how your heart rules your mind. Can I hear your amen? That's how your heart rules your mind. That's how your heart rules your mind. Now, can I tell you this? I have, that is, our church does not have anything near the budget for this project. Mm. This faith tabernacle. Mm. He didn't have it. Mm. He didn't give us time to even budget for it. Mm. Because he knows he will never do it. So is it either going to be delivered by faith or it will be, die, be dead forever? Please understand this. And it will make a world of difference in your life. Glory to God. You have a job to do if you want to see prophecies fulfilled in your life. And may you receive grace to do that job. It's of the heart and it rules the head. It's of the heart, and it rules the head. Now, I mean, um, for me to stand here and say, September 18 is a reality. Your head has been subdued by the faith of your heart. Glory to God. I mean, they are say, struggling with the roof, and we have two months to go. He said, September 18 is a reality. Ah. <laughs> that means the faith of your heart has dominated your head. Your head must bow to it. Glory to God. So if you must be healed, come on now, listen to me, you will be healed from the heart. You see, the reason is that you have left your welfare to the head. <laughs> you have left your welfare to the head. You have subjected to situations and circumstances. If those fellows allow their head to come to play, they would let, they would bow to those graven image. Fear the furnace? Are you not thinking? No. My faith has subdued my head to establish my triumph. Come on, somebody is blessed. I think this is the school of advanced faith. School of advanced faith. I'm sure you are getting it. Are you getting it? I called our staff. I said. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, pay everybody. There was nothing anywhere. And I don't need to know that anyway. 
And Philip said, yes, sir. <laughs> because he has been told, the day you say, there is no money, you are dead. <laughs> At 1.30, 30, 30 minutes to the time, heavens organized it. And somebody walked in from Enugu. You don't make that kind of journey. And deliver the seed. Say God told him to come and deliver this seed. Far beyond what he meant to pay. And Philip came to my office. Hey, that there is money. There's money. There's money. I said, there has been money before. You are just blind. You can't see. There's money before. Glory to God. It's of the heart. And it rules the head. Glory to God. Somebody is here believing God for fruit of the womb. You can be pregnant there on your seat. Because the faith in your heart will reach order your body. And that faith is the holy force that becomes a child. I like fourth service because we are not horrid. I don't feel like going anywhere now. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Secondly, the Bible says, We have been the same spirit of faith. Second Corinthians 4 13. We believe. Therefore, we have spoken. Therefore have I spoken. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Faith manifests its full power through our tongue. Through what? If you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and become to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Why? Redemption has empowered your tongue to create. Can I hear your amen? amen? Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Don't say before an angel, it's an error. So everything you say counts for or against you. Everything you say counts for or against you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. Everything you say counts for or against you. Faith manifests its full power through our tongue. When Word of Faith Bible was going to start in 1986, my wife, out of concern, said to me, the school is resuming next week, and we don't know, we don't have any place yet where they will resume to. And I answered, is it your school? You know what that means? The owner of the school is smarter than all of us. Mm -hmm. He should know where the school is. <laughs> Immediately, at that statement, statement, the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw a building on Casino Road. And I said, that is the Bible school. Uh -huh. So it was clean. I wasn't sleeping. I was getting ready to go to the office. So I got to the office and I called one of the staff. I said, there's a building. So, so, so. I described the place. He said, yeah, that's Casino Street. I said, go there. That's where the Bible school will be. By the time he got there and listened, the owner of the building was standing in front. In his uh, calf town. And he said, Barkade, they greeted themselves. Are you the landlord of this building? Guess the first word. Jesus is the landlord and the caretaker. <laughs> the same morning, he said, we need it for Bible school. For Bible school, then it's free. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> One week to the time, the power of faith transmitted through the tongue. All I needed to do was to join my wife and say, Look, well, we don't know. And then, well, 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 if it comes, then okay. Will never start. Mm. Mm. God is up to it one hour to the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So we got two floors on that building for free. How many floors? Ah, yeah. One for office, one for the Bible school. And the landlord registered as one of the four students in the Bible school. And grew to become an elder in our church. There is no human connection under heaven. The power of faith is largely transmitted through the tongue. So wake up and engage your tongue positively. Engage your tongue positively. Many people pray one thing and say another. They pray breakthrough and they speak breakdowns. They pray for help and they speak sickness. And you shall have whatsoever you say. That's what your angel will deliver. Angel doesn't know whether you made the mistake or not. He said, don't say before an angel is an error. He doesn't hear. Everything you declare, I'm weak. He comes to weaken you. I'm done. He comes to knock off your feet. I can't make it. He organizes your failure in a grand style. Anything you say is a command to the angels. Anything you say. So speak right. Since I've been saying I can never be sick, am I sick now? But you can't say it. You ah, I can say that. What if I'm now sick? What would they now think? You know, the moment is rooted in the heart, it dominates your head. It dominates your head. Death also know people you can't play around. Because if, if you think you kill them, they are still alive, they jump up. You'll be humiliated. Because in that, they stone Paul to death. You know what Paul said? I can do all things. There's a level of depth in God that puts you above all, all circumstances. They stoned him to death, dragged him out of town, and he got up by himself. Nobody had the courage to pray over him. But inside him is an undying force. There's a force that gives him dominion over death. That force rose and brought him out. Somebody's changing position. Now listen, if God said so, your job is to believe so. And if you truly believe it, your job is to start saying it. Your job is to what? Start saying it. To start saying it. Your job is to start saying it. Believe it, say it, and you will see it. Believe it, say it, and you will see it. Believe it, say it, and you will see it. Believe it, say it, and you will see it. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5. As thou knowest not the ways of the spirit, or how bones develop in she in her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all things. You can't discover God. Just believe him. It's up to anything he says. How then do I see prophecies fulfilled? Number one, inject your faith into the prophetic word. Say with me, I must inject my faith. I must not assume my faith. I must inject my faith into the prophetic word. When everything went upside down and all hope that it should be saved was lost, God visited Paul in that ship and said to him, I've given you all the men that travel with you. There shall be no loss. Hmm? And Paul said in Acts 27 verse 25, be of good cheers. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. It's one thing to be told. It's another thing for you to inject your faith into what you are told. You must consciously inject your faith. Like Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. On that which was spoken. And it came to pass. So inject your faith. And then you see prophecies come to pass like a play. Glory to God. You are not struggling with it. You are sitting in a prophetic sanctuary. This cannot be built by the hand of man. And it was spoken when there was nothing like that in view. Whatever God has spoken to you concerning the year, it may not look like it at all, at all, at all, where you are now. But as the law liveth, you will appear in Shiloh 2014 as an embodiment of fulfillment of prophecies. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. 
Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. This is very important. Inject your faith into the prophetic word. Number two, expect to see prophecies fulfilled. You know, this is the mystery here. In Hebrews 11, 1, he said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Simply put, faith is the substance of things expected. The evidence of things not visible at all in the now. Things expected. What faith does is to fertilize expectation into actualization. So I call expectation Mrs. Faith. Glory to God. And the meeting of the two of them is what delivers testimonies. So it takes expectation for your faith to actualize fulfillment of prophecy. It takes expectation. It takes what? Expectation. It's against hope. Abraham believed in hope. Come on now. Against hope. Believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Against hope. He remained super expectant. Glory to God. Mm. Many of us are saying one thing and speaking and expecting another. And expecting another. Many of us claim to believe one thing, but we're expecting exactly the opposite. We're expecting exactly the opposite. So our expectation must be properly guarded. Your expectation must not be exposed to vandalism. You must preserve it jealously guarded. Without expectation, faith remains impotent. Faith cannot produce. How many have heard me say, I'm not surprised that we're where we are? That I would have been surprised if you are not there. Now, you know what? I was pregnant with the expectations of the manifestations today. How was, my expectation was unperturbed, undislodged, intact. Look at every item of those 55 prophetic statements and establish your expectation of them within this set time of one year. Don't play with God. God has no problem getting this done in one year. No. He built this tabernacle in one year without any prior notice. This notice is too long. This notice is too long. Expect it. For your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24 verse 14. So shall the Lord your wisdom be to thy soul, and when you are found in there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Come and say, I expect to see it. And I must see it. I must see it. I must see it. Let's rush to round up right now. To see prophecies fulfilled, engage faith filled thoughts. Fill your heart with the thought of its fulfillment. Fill your heart with the thoughts of its fulfillment. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. First Peter 1 13. You guard up the loins of your mind against the intruders of doubt. You just don't let it come in. God said it, I believe it, and I'm sure to see it. God said it, I believe it, no devil can disannul it. God said it, I be, and you have, your heart is filled with those thoughts 24-7. You refuse to allow your mind to Corrupt your spirit. 
No. I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about me. Is God up to it? My answer is yes. If God is up to it, you doubt. I declare you dead. Get out of my way. For instance, on this table, there is enough force to destroy cancer. All you need is to believe it, expect it, and don't give up doing that. Then it sets you free. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every prophetic word that has gone forth in your direction for the year 2015, I declare them fully delivered. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. For Sarah conceived and be Abraham a son at the set time of which God had spoken. Hallelujah. Set time. That prophetic agenda is for the set time of 2015. For what set time? Come and say, I'm expecting my divine visitation for dramatic turnaround. 2015 is the set time 